please welcome to the stage Dr. William Corvey. Good afternoon. I'm Will Corvey. I'm a program manager in DARPA's Information Innovation Office. And today I'm going to tell you about a capability that can help protect individuals against video deepfakes. This capability was developed across DARPA's Media Forensics and Semantic Forensics or Semaphore programs. And these large research programs have been creating foundational technologies to offset the malicious use of manipulated media. Probably most of us have heard about deepfakes, videos or other kinds of media that have been altered using AI and machine learning techniques. The term deepfakes actually originated in 2017 in a Reddit thread where a developer released software that used machine learning techniques to automatically replace a face in video. That software and other variants have been widely used to create manipulative videos for entertainment purposes, like this one where Sylvester Stallone has been swapped into the movie Home Alone. Deepfake technology continues to advance, driven largely by the entertainment and the gaming industries. This deepfake roundtable example shows a much more compelling capability, altering multiple individuals in the video. The video is also longer, about 15 minutes in length, with multiple shots and multiple camera angles. And the actors are moving quickly, and their heads are seen from multiple perspectives. All of these factors make the video more difficult to create than the previous one, and require more time and more resources. But videos like the ones we just saw rely on actors that have similar facial structure and can mimic mannerisms and voices of the targets, adding significantly to the realism. While automated deepfake tools continue to advance, they still require manual effort to create their most compelling effects. And in fact, if you look closely at the images here, you can see some of the artifacts that may get introduced in the manipulation process, particularly around the eyeglasses. While many of the uses of deepfakes are entertaining, others are much more serious. On March 16, 2022, this video of President Zelensky was posted on several online forums calling for Ukrainian troops to lay down their arms. Prior to this video being released, the TV station Ukraine 24 was hacked to display a ticker indicating that President Zelensky was urging Ukrainians to stop fighting. The video was quickly debunked and correctly identified as a poor quality deepfake, but it illustrates the challenges of manipulated media. This video is probably the first use of deepfakes in the context of war. If it had been more compelling, it may have changed the trajectory of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. To illustrate the pace at which deepfake technology can be utilized, here's another manipulated video from the Russia-Ukraine conflict released less than a day after the Zelensky video through online fora. And this time, the target was Vladimir Putin. In the video, Putin appears to say, quote, we've managed to reap peace with Ukraine and goes on to announce the restoration of the independence of Crimea as a republic inside Ukraine. A tweet sharing the video with a caption in Ukrainian reads in translation, quote, the president of the Russian Federation announced the surrender of Russia, Russian soldier, drop your weapons and go home while you're alive. This video also was quickly debunked due to the lack of corroboration through other Russian sources and was likely created using clips from an address delivered by President Putin on February 21st, 2022, and a more recent audio track replaced the original. So how are these things made? There are several techniques used for generating deepfake videos, and new approaches are constantly being developed. Here are a few sample frames with the pristine video in the first row and four different techniques that have been studied by our research teams in the following rows. In lip sync, for instance, a new audio track is used in the video, but only the pixels around the mouth are digitally altered to synchronize with the audio track. In face swap, the face of the person is in the source video is replaced with the image of the target of the deep fake, but the audio track, the facial expressions, the mouth, the head movements, and the background are all preserved from the source video. Puppeteering, in contrast, is a bit more sophisticated than face swap, where another video is used to drive the facial expression changes in each frame of the target deepfake video. And lastly, impersonator videos, the old-fashioned standby, are different where there are no digital manipulations. And we'll look at an example of that just now. So here's an example of where an actor is pretending to be former President Barack Obama. Defensive techniques relying on digital fingerprints to detect manipulations will fail on such cases. However, alternatives like the soft biometric features being developed in the Simulfork program 
can catch both this case and the digital manipulations. The soft biometric approaches build a model of an individual's behavior only from known good data. The soft biometric approach starts with algorithms that can automatically identify facial landmarks and from those facial action units. Facial action units are collections of muscles in the face that lead to expressions. Some example action units are the eyebrow raiser, the lip corner puller, one of my favorites, the nose wrinkler. These action unit values along with the head and mouth movement are built into machine learning framework that creates a face and head movement mo model of a particular individual. So it requires about 10 hours of training video to build such soft biometric models. That makes soft biometric approaches viable for high profile individuals like senior leaders where a lot of high quality video data is available. Due to the individual nature of these muscle movements, they're extremely hard to fake, even for a professional interpreter. The defensive model is robust to a wide variety of manipulation techniques, including face swapping, puppeteering, and lip sync deep fakes. It's also robust against impersonator footage where no digital manipulation has occurred. The models can be used to automatically compare the movement patterns for the real individual against the movement patterns in a suspect video. Using that research foundation, Semaphore performers developed a tool that can analyze videos for targeted individuals. Here's the tool in action on the clip from a deep fake of former President Barack Obama that was created by Jordan Peele. The algorithm correctly identified the video as a deep fake, as indicated by the 11% integrity score shown at the top right, yielding very likely manipulated for this finding for this video. This, in contrast, is a video of an impersonator, not a deep fake. One advantage of our approach is that unlike deep fake forensics, it's able to flag this video accurately with a low integrity score, even though there's no digital video manipulation present. Also note higher frame level scores above the 0.5 threshold in orange indicating manipulation. And here's an example of a pristine video with no manipulations and the system detects it correctly with a high integrity score at the top right. The user can also review some of the evidence generated in the process. First, one can verify that the system detected the facial landmarks correctly as a human might expect. And second, the graph at the bottom shows the signal generated for each frame, analyzing a small temporal window of neighboring frames. A lower score here means that the video is consistent with the model of the person of interest. We're also developing additional tools to help analysts really dig into the foundational details of what the algorithm sees. In this pristine video, there's a more animated style of speaking, a lot more head movement. The visualization of the action units on the right shows the strength of the action units for the different parts of the face. And a future version of this defensive tool will also highlight the action units that contributed most to the algorithm's decision. On this manipulated video, the algorithm assigns a low integrity score, correctly predicting that the video was manipulated. Furthermore, the tool can highlight the facial action units where the behavior of the face is inconsistent with the real individual. In this case, there are four pairs of action units that are not consistent with the real President Zelensky. In summary, deepfake technology will continue to advance for the foreseeable future. And we believe that defensive approaches, like the ones that we've shown, will be important for combating manipulated media. I'd like to particularly thank the researchers at Kitware Incorporated, University of California, Berkeley, and Pinstream for the results that we've shown today. Thanks very much. <laughs>